I have expected you. Welcome to Babel Area about Digimon Adventure, the 20 minute short film from 1999. I'm Every Day, but you can call me Era, and let's start. First off, spoiler warning, I will talk about the entire film, so if you haven't seen it, it's only 20 minutes, so you can go watch it and then come back. Digimon Adventure was first released on the 6th of March of 1999, right before the television series, and functions as a prologue. It was produced by Toei Animation, written by Reiko Yoshida, and directed by Mamoru Hosoda. I watched the cut version of the film, which is included in Digimon the Movie multiple times in German, and for this video I also watched the original Japanese version with Spanish subtitles. Even though the movie is only 20 minutes, or in case of the Digimon The Movie version 15 minutes, I think it tells a good story. As a prologue to the show it works wonderfully. It opens a lot of questions, which is always a good start to a story. There are a lot of scenes which could be interpreted as unnecessary, like the whole Miku vs. Koromon scene and the scene where the father comes back home, but I think they add context, which unfortunately was removed in the US version. Seeing the streets at night with just a few cars going by and the bus and the vending machines gave an interesting vibe overlooking the giant orange dinosaur that was walking around. I would be majorly interested to know who and how they found Ty and Carrie and what their parents' reaction to all this was. Overall, I think the movie, in its original version, has a good feeling for when words are necessary and when silence is a better fit. That got lost in the dub though, so nah. There are no things I would have done differently. I think that's partially because it's so short and partially because it just is really good. My favorite moments... As there are differences between the dub version and the original version, I would say that... In the original version, I think it's a scene where Miku chases Koromon through the room of the kids. And in the dub version, it's a scene with Botamon under the bed and Carrie and Botamon humming the soundtrack to each other. I always loved that scene. As well as the entire scene of Carrie on Agumon's back, just because the dub made that part really funny. About all characters, I don't have much to say. The movie is 20 minutes and the time that passes within is barely more than 24 hours. I think the movie gives us a good first glance at Ty's and Carrie's personalities and weirdly also a good first glance at the personalities of some of the other kids. I have nothing to say about Karaman. Parrotman is kind of the antagonist here, I think. To be honest, personally, I just think it was disoriented and because of that aggressive, but maybe it was also a planned test. I don't know. It did its duty as an opponent to Greymon, but nah. My favorite side character... There aren't really any. Miko? Let's just say Miko. So, so, so. A title discussion here is Definitely necessary. I think it was a slightly bad decision to give the first movie and the first show the same name. That just seems like a bad idea. So I think another name or a slightly more distinct name could have been better. Just simply Digimon could have worked very well or actually putting prologue in the title. Or if we want to go into a more creative space, something like Digimon First Adventure could have been really cool. The character designs are really good. The clothes of the kids are simple and yet very fitting and Carrie's color onesie is so cute. I also weirdly really like this massive Agumon. It looks really cool. The backgrounds. Hmm. I was never in Tokyo so I can't say how accurate it is but I really like the backgrounds. The apartment is designed nicely. The backgrounds of all the apartment buildings are pretty similar to each other but I think that's actually a good thing because like that it's easier to concentrate on what we should be focused on and that's the characters. The animation. I am honestly really surprised by how good it is and by how good it still is. Like it aged very well. The animation looks a bit rough but it works. The animations feel rather flexible. I can't actually explain what I really mean by that, but for me it is. The framing of the scenes for this movie is really really good. I mean, look at this. These are such nice framings. 
While watching the full thing, I was actually multiple times surprised by how they decided to frame certain things because I didn't expect it at all. For the dubbing, and I already want to apologize if I pronounce any names wrong, I'm giving my best here. The original Japanese synchronization, Toshiko Fujita as Tai, Araki Kai as Kari, and Chika Sakamoto as Koromon did a great job at bringing the characters to life. And I weirdly liked that Agamon and Greymon just don't talk. Regarding the English dub, I didn't watch the entire movie in English, I just went through a bit to check for certain scenes, but from what I heard, Joshua Seth as Tai did a great job. Lara Jill Miller as Carrie, I personally didn't like. Her voice seems unfitting for Carrie, though that is very likely because I'm used to her German voice, which is more similar to the way Ara Kikai voiced her. And Karaman was voiced by multiple people and I didn't really hear them talk, so no opinion on that as of right now. The German dub, I'm biased. Okay, I'm really biased. But I think that Florian Knorn as Thai did a great job, Marie-Louise Schramm as Carrie also did a wonderful job, and Gerard Schale as all of Coromon's evolutions also did great. I may be biased, but the German dub is really good. The entire sound design in the original is so good. In the scene where Carrie is on Agumon's back, we hear a few things. A dog barking, an ambulance in the distance, cans clinking, there were honestly no idea where those were. We hear the cars driving by, some honking of those cars, and the heavy buzzing of the vending machines. Now, I don't know if vending machines actually buzz like that. I haven't encountered many in my life, but it certainly adds to the atmosphere. The only music used in the original is Bolero by Maurice Ravel. It was published in 1929, that was 94 years ago, by the way. I don't know why they decided that, I don't know who decided that, but I truly need to thank that person. When you hear about where Bolero came from, who made it, and then hear what Digimon is about, it's just a question you had like, how is this supposed to fit together? But somehow, somehow... They made it work perfectly and I just can't understand how. In the dub, as mentioned above, that gets lost. We not only have a voiceover from Carrie, we also have more music and most importantly different music. No bolero to be found here. While the bolero was not under any copyright anymore in 1999 in Japan, in the US and Germany too, it still was under copyright, which means they needed to use different music. The composers for the movie, Udi Harpas and Amos Plesner, together with Shuki Levy, composed and produced new classic music in collaboration with the Tel Aviv Symphony Orchestra, better known as the Israel Philharmonic Orchestra. And honestly, the music turned out good. The Fazit. The Conclusion. Digimon Adventure is a really good movie. The dubbing didn't do justice in the way it was intended, but I think it's still acceptable. The tone of the movie is definitely different in the original and the dubbed version, so I would recommend watching both even if you don't know a single word of Japanese. As a prologue, it also works pretty nicely, and just in general, I always enjoy it whenever I get around to watch it again. And that's it. Here you have a little Babel era video, though I think this turned out longer than I originally anticipated. At the end, I did have a lot of thoughts about this movie and I found out quite a bit of stuff I didn't know before. And with this, I release you into the depths of the universe once again. See ya!